I'm Jeff Feynman, that's Dr. Christina Chambro, and we're here from Holistic Actions to help answer all your questions within the context of the energy and balance framework that integrates really well into um, conventional medicine and conventional holistic medicine. So why don't we start? Uh, you can ask your questions right away in the chat or raise you your hand mute or raise your hand there, there are a few of us you can just go ahead go ahead yanni thank you so much for this opportunity can you hear me well yes we can hear you <laughs> thanks uh, well uh well first of all i really appreciate what you do and it's amazing and it's it's like a hope you know for me to have your information available. One of my dogs, uh, they're both three years old. They're on spade. Um, and one of them, she's been having a discharge and it started being white, like just a little bit of white discharge. Um, and then uh, just a few days ago, it turned like dark red. It almost looks like blood, but like thick. Um, I took her to the vet and they, uh, you know, they took a sample and they looked at it. They said there's no blood. Um, they said that it's not blood and that there's no infection. Yeah, but they were concerned about, you know, her cervix being open and therefore like being chance for infection, like in the future, like in the short term or so. And what they want me to do is just pay her. I have scheduled um, an ultrasound for, you know, this Wednesday. And I, I don't know, I'd like to know what you think uh, about this. Well, the Thanks. first question is during this time from before she started the discharge uh, through now, how is she feeling? She's doing well. Yeah. Any, is there any change in, we call it beam behavior, energy, appetite, and mood. And it's a great way to judge how are your, how's your animal doing overall and what it helps you make a decision as to what you might need to do next. Um, so is there been any change in any of those behavior, energy, mood, appetite? Not really. No, like she's, playing she's you know they they both used to play more with each other before we moved we moved to this new house because they were like they had more space you know they were in the country running around but that didn't like start when I saw the discharge so I don't know if that can be something to think about the change of environment so how long before how long <laughs> after you moved how long <laughs> after Whoops, could everybody oh. mute themselves, please, except for Yanni? That would be appreciated. We're hearing a lot of background. <laughs> Muted. Uh, Yanni, um, how long after the move did the discharge begin? Three months. Oh, okay. But yeah. the playfulness decreased after the move, not after the discharge. No, no, no. Okay. Dr. Jeff? What could be causing this other than, so basically what we say is the cause of all symptoms is an imbalance in the energy field, but there also is that Western medical side of it to sort of be thinking about. Dr. Jeff? Yeah, I mean, that, that would be my question is, you know, energetically, we know what's causing it. I mean, this is basically just sign up an imbalance in the energy field, um, physiologically, your fat's right. I mean, it's likely hormonal. Hence, bang would likely stop. It could be polycystic ovaries. It could be um something, you know, vaginal and the vaginal mucosa. And I'm sorry, um, see when she was last in heat. Um, July, the end of July. It start. It stopped at the end of July. Yeah, so it may also be a split heat. What you're saying um, is is part of the normal estrus cycle. Actually, it's not normal. Part of a, a common part of the estrus cycle where you see it, that it goes away, then it comes back. That's also another early warning sign that 
maybe a good time to start working on energy balance. So That's, do you have a holistic veterinarian who you're consulting with, like a homeopathic one by phone, perhaps? Well, I uh, I live in North Carolina, and I um, I took her to a vet in Charlotte, North Carolina, and they said that were, they were holistic, but a lot of times it happens that they say they're holistic, and then you get there, and they're like, oh, the first thing they tell you is just spay, get, yeah, just no. spay, and you leave it so, behind you. You know? So isn't um isn't Shaq in Charlotte? Okay. So, so you have a you have a perfect whoops. Can you mute everybody? Jeff again. Thank you. Um so Yanni in Charlotte is an incredibly wonderful homeopathic veterinarian who will not tell you that. <laughs> and his name is Dr. James Schacht. S C H A C H T, right? Okay. Close anyway. Um, and this is a something for every one of you, regardless of all of the questions that you've been asking. Um, is now when anytime there's a problem, or even better, before any problems occur, is the time to put together your holistic healthcare team. And if you go to I mean, Yanni is lucky enough. She mentioned Charlotte and we know somebody in Charlotte. And so, but we don't always know somebody in every town in the United States and in the world. So if you go to holisticactions.com slash select, that's an article that will tell you how to find and put together and find veterinarians to be on your healthcare team. And then you also need some others as well. Um, and so, um, definitely do that. But at the key thing, I hope everybody heard is we asked Johnny, how was, we were, we did have specific questions about the discharge. Like when was the last heat, but more importantly, we had, how's your dog feeling? What's the beam? So that's the key to helping decide what to do. So no, you don't need to rush to do a spay right now. You have some time. Now, if you're a member, if you become a member of Holistic Actions community, then there's a 24 seven forum and you could be posting every day if you need. The discharge now looks like this. Her beam is still good. Should I change anything? And somebody will get back to you a community member or somebody else. So there's lots of support um, at Holistic Action. So that would be the second best thing to do is number one, Jim Schacht for you and for everybody else, go to the select article. And um, number two, become a member. And um, if people are brand new to Holistic uh, or sort of new to Holistic, take the free class. It's five lessons. And so just go to the website, holisticactions.com and sign up for the 101 course. And that'll give you a whole lot of new things to think about. Okay, I wanna answer a quick question here. Um, Ellen Schaefer asked about protocol for cleaning out ear mites in cats. I would definitely follow a nature Frasers. Um, I don't know about Waxasol, uh, that I haven't heard of, um, but if you use, is basically her solution and her protocol of, I think you do it for 10 days and then stop. But most importantly, I mean, it is important to clean out the mites themselves once they're there, but all, many, many cats get a mite in their ear and don't develop an environment where mites thrive and produce that black gritty discharge. Mm -hmm. So for everybody, number one, you wanna make sure it is ear mites by actually seeing the mites under the microscope. And if you run a shelter, you can do that yourself. You can have a microscope and take a look under the mite. They crawl around on the slide, you can see them. Um, and then it's to boost and to balance their energy field and boost their vitality. So in addition to soothing the ears and cleaning out the ears. Um, oh, wonderful, Chell, that's excellent. Um, she, she has a cat with over two, a shelter with over 200 cats. You definitely need to check out Brighthaven, B-R-I-G-H-T-H-A-V-E-N. 
org. Gail Pope had not 200, but uh, around 100 um, most of the time she ran her shelter. So I would, you're doing great. Um, and I would just keep studying, keep learning. I would join holistic actions. Um, your question is so broad that I think you'll be hearing bits and pieces as we answer people's specific questions today. But good for you, Shell, for doing that. Um, okay, so now we had somebody wonderful uh, raising their hand. I, yeah, I just want to go back Gina. to Ellen, Ellen asked about before she uses the Nitra solution, me out and try in the ear. Um, no, I just use a couple of drops of sweet almond oil, wipe it out, and you may or may not, may not even need to use anything after that because the oil will actually suffocate the arm mites, but the oil will suffocate the mites. Yep. So, and yeah. So. Vitamin E oil also can do that and can be useful. I'd mix E and um, almond oil together. Well, she says her her treatment is actually the almond oil, almond oil, olive oil, and vitamin E. Yeah, uh, but then so after, that's that's soothing in itself. Right, okay. and after doing that, so it's day nineteen, you put wax dissolve to break up any wax and flush the ears. But I don't know what that is. I wouldn't worry about that. It should be pretty well cleaned out by that point. If at the same time you're working to build the immune system, to working to rebalance the energy field. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And and Gina did raise her cute yes. hand there in the uh, chat. Yes, yes. Gina. Gina. I know you're in there somewhere. He's, we'll get oh wait. I just sent her an ask to unmute request. You still working on it? Uh, well, I can't unmute her, but I asked her to unmute. Okay. All right. So I guess so we'll move on, move on to, to Anthea. Yeah, so Anthea, how is polycystic kidney disease in a one-year-old cat treated? Hmm. The treatment for something like that would be to make sure you're working with a homeopathic veterinarian or a really good traditional Chinese medicine veterinarian. Dr. Jeff? Well, I love the question because I get to answer it more specifically. It depends. <laughs> the, way, the way that we would treat it will depend on the values. It will treat on the, depend on the history. It will depend on the symptoms. Um, but in general, you have to get time to start with a, a bad homeopath along with other energy building techniques, fresh food diet, Lots of engagement, play, love, unlimited water, and definitely structured water, or or use something like celery juice or other juice. You know that can be used in addition to the water, but um, the, it depends. What it, it really does depend on, you know, what the kitty's water consumption is like, what the all the other stuff is. And Veronique, it's great to see you here. Do you want to ask your question out loud? Sure. Um, so this is really sort of a general question about underlying factors in an animal. Um, and so I'm asking, can an unhealed fracture cause generalized inflammation in a dog? I have a dog who's maybe 13, 14, she has uh, had this, she had the fracture when we adopted her and uh, has had a host of things going on with her. Uh, but I think she's, she's slowly healing up, but that fracture is always going to be there. I mean, at some point it, it, it heals to the extent that it can heal. I mean, it's, it's not going to, she's not going to walk again. Um, <clears throat> but um does it make sense to think that that's always going to be an obstacle for nope. her having Absol a 10 out nope. of 10, for instance, on the beans? Nope. 
Absolutely not. Okay. And as Jeff mentioned before, it's another perfect example of it depends. Right. So um, let's see, my daughter's about 37. So about 24 years ago, I was in Costa Rica and broke one of my ankles. I can't remember. I think it was my left. It was my right ankle. Um, and it was a big, bad fracture, really bad fracture. But I managed to walk on it for 10 days. And so I didn't need surgery. I can't even remember which leg it was. It's causing me no problems at all. When I was 28, I was in a bad crash and the injuries from that have continued to bother me off and on. Now, when I was 28, I knew nothing about holistic approaches, didn't do anything to support myself, had a lot of drugs. When I was in my mid thirties and broke my ankle, I had tons of holistic support. Mm. And now at 70, I'm finally turning around the chronic disease from when I was 28. So it's never give up hope yeah. and continue to try new things. That's what's wonderful about holistic actions is we have three, three to four speakers a month covering yeah. all these different topics. And you can research the past six years of, of what we've done. And so it'll give you the good side is it'll give you plenty of things to try. The downside is, oh my God, which one do I start with? Pick one. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So, you know, yes, it happened, and only, and but don't make an assumption about it. Right. Well, Dr. Jeff has been instrumental in helping her uh, become a happier dog. Which, for me, I'm. I mean, I've had to really change my paradigm in terms of knowing how do I know she's feeling better. Oh well, when I hear her play with her squeak toy, she's feeling better. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a completely different shift in my brain. I'm not, I mean, I'm still testing her urine, making sure she's still within a certain parameter, but uh, it's, it's actually broader than that. It's, it's, is she happy? You know, that kind of thing. And, and Dr. Shipp, thank you so much for, you know, all the help you continue to provide for us. <laughs> so, well, and, and that, that really is the key. I, I, I just, I cannot, Veronique, underline, thank you for sharing that because having a holistic healthcare team, including a really good holistic veterinarian, to start with, to have that in place now is critical because you may have to go through one or two people. You know, mm -hmm. I've worked with 35 different modalities to find one that finally now at 73 is turning me around. Um, and, or it may be a personality thing. You have to find someone who works with you that way. So start now, everybody in finding that. <laughs> That's so really, much. yep, really important. Um, petrified of her carrier because she correlates it with a vet. I don't think buying a new one necessarily, although that could be a possibility. I wouldn't have thought of that. And I like that as a possible suggestions. But first I would have the one that, she used before and leave it open in the house with toys and food in it and also play games with her where the game like if it's a laser or a feather or something she's chasing have it where that late that goes near where the carrier is and if you notice that she stops playing the game then be further away and then slowly ooch your way closer so that would definitely be one be one approach. Another one is to number one work with an animal intuitive. Animal intuitive animal communicators should be part of your healthcare team. I recommend a really good veterinary exam once a year, preferably by a veterinarian who is trained in TCD in Chinese medicine, tongue and pulse diagnosis, and chiropractic or osteopathic and homeopathy, or at least a few of those, um, if you can find one or one of them, um, and every year and twice a year do an intuitive check and or take one of the many courses out there where you learn to talk to your animals. And so in addition to watching Beam and checking for the early warning signs, uh, little clues that the vital force is off balance, that um, that's the way that you'll be able to know how, how she's doing. But definitely playfulness is great. Um, 
Okay, so Gina posted her question. Yeah, do you want to go back to Jenny? Um, Did I miss Jenny? Yeah, I think Jenny I answered had... her in. I think I answered her in the chat. Oh, okay. Oh, go ahead, Jenny. Uh, yeah, I'm not finding the. I, I want to double check that I got the name of the veterinarian Charlotte right. Um. Oh, um, it's. Jim, Jim I, I'll Shack. type it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. CHT. I typed it in the. Uh, yeah, it's Dr. Schacht. Mm -hmm. There you go. And Lindy gave the uh, website, charlottenaturalanimal.com. Excellent. Um. Okay. I can, can I do Gina's question? Yeah, let's see. We'll jump down to where did Gina's go? Do, do, do. I've lost it. Da, 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 oh, there we go. Okay. So yeah, why don't you go ahead with that one? <laughs> I'm not quite sure the answer is because I'm not sure what the question is. Um, is should she be? Yeah. yeah, but the dog may still be heartworm positive, in which case she may not want to do the advantage. Um, but would she want to ever do the advantage? Well, that wasn't the question. <laughs> <laughs> But we need to address that as well. Okay, well, <laughs> then you better answer that. <laughs> well, no, go ahead. Because you brought up a point I didn't think of. So, yeah, we need to know if she's heartworm negative at this point. Um, and, yeah, I mean, why, why the advantage? Is it for mosquito control, basically, for prevention that way? Um, so I guess I need a bit more context i guess Gina, you're not able to unmute um but in general what chris what dr christina was asking is do we want to expose our dogs or ourselves to a potential carcinogen even though it's safe but wear gloves don't touch it that's what the package inserts usually say um and yet you're going to put it on your dog <laughs> It's just one of the disconnects, you know, in in veterinary and human medicine and in life is that what is called safe isn't always really safe. I mean, um, you're probably not going to have any acute problems from the advantage, but sometimes you actually see that as well. Um, but the key is what you want to be doing is thinking about. So, Dr. Jeff, advantage is flea, not heartworm prevention. Flea, flea, brain. Okay. Flea, so here's flea. here's the thing about fleas and ticks, guys. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Were you going to say something, Dr. Jeff? Oh, I, I should um, advantage multi, and there are so many multis out there that I'm not even sure. I'll right. look it up right now. Okay. So here's the thing um, about first heartworm prevention. Um I personally have not seen a lot of chronic disease in dogs caused by heartworm prevention when it's used as it needs to be done. Um, and so you need to learn the heartworm cycle. You need to learn that the heartworm prevention is a morning after pill. It doesn't prevent them from getting infected. Um, and so you need to, it's a whole long conversation, but you want to research it. That's what's really important is don't give anything without researching it. Now, chemicals that are used to treat fleas and ticks, those bugs um, become immune to them. They, they, they really do. And those chemicals can be very damaging long-term. We do see a lot of chronic disease caused by them. So I would totally avoid any flea and tick chemicals. There's plenty of other options. Um, a, a member, um, one of the member benefits is my Kindle book, The Fleas Be Gone, which gives you 50 pages about fleas and a little bit about ticks. Um, there's a wonderful new product called Flea Destroyer. And it's not a new, it's just a new variant on a on nematodes, which have been around forever, and it's just a better 
easier to use uh, product. And basically it's, I recommend every single person get flea destroyer and get your yard, treat, treat your yard with it because it's restoring the natural biome of the natural nematodes that should have been there already. And, and just get it started one year and it should keep reproducing itself and it will help the planet. And then do that at um, any pet yards you go to, or, you know, try, let's get these nematodes out there where they need to be. They help with fire ants too. Good for you. So she used flea destroyer and got her neighbors on each side to use it. That's really wonderful. And then there are tons of holistic approaches but healthy dogs just don't attract fleas. Healthy dogs and cats do not attract fleas. Um, and so lots to do on lots to do on that area. Um, so that so the answer, Gina, is no to the advantage. Um, and then Athea, Althea has her hand up in the chat. Anthea, sorry. No, I don't think so. We can sort of hear you. Yeah, I don't think that. That wasn't Anthea. I, yeah, I don't think so. Anthea? I don't see, I don't see an Anthea in, in the meeting now. So. Oh, bummer. Maybe she had to leave. Sorry if we don't get to you right away, everybody. Um, okay, we'll move on. Anthea, if you come back, we'll try to remember. Let me write it down. We'll check periodically. Okay, um, an indoor outdoor cat and he still gets fleas outside. So I definitely, you want to get the book, uh, Fleas Be Gone. You definitely want to do the flea destroyers, it, flea destroyer in your yard with the nematodes in your house. And this is just really brief, um, but you can learn more about it in all of those areas. Dr. Jeff, in the 101 course, do we have anything on fleas in there? I don't know that no, we do. I don't think so. Okay, but as again, as a member benefit of Holistic Actions, you get the book um, and many, many conversations in the forum on fleas and ticks. So um, in the house, you can put out flea traps that are bowls, little bowls of soapy water with a light shining on them or sitting on a heating pad in a place where dogs and cats aren't gonna be drinking out of it. And the fleas are attracted by the heat, hop in, can't get out because of the soap. And that's a way to help in the house. Uh, you may need to put down diatomaceous earth in the house. And, uh, but most importantly, you need to be figuring, go ahead. To find it? Yeah, I got it over there. Go ahead. That's it. Uh, that's it. No, there's it just a whole yeah. bunch of people that are, that are on. No, that's that's not it. Okay, sorry, we're gonna have to we'll have to mute you all again. If the cat what does that say that writing? What was we huh? Um... Okay. okay, we're going to have to mute everybody. Um, so hopefully that will be a good flea answer. And then there are multiple other um, approaches, but mainly feeding a fresh food diet, using energy work, and uh, certainly continuing to comb every time he comes in. If only a flea or two has gotten away, I doubt you have fleas in the house. So it's a matter of building his vitality. Take the 101 course, number one, by Anitra Fraser's book, The Natural Cat. And for everybody, if you go to YouTube, um, we have some of our speakers we have made available that are available to members, but we've made them available to everybody. So you can go to YouTube Holistic Actions and you can listen to Anitra Frazier, who's incredible. Um, and definitely D said borax for carpets absolutely can work. Um, essential oils. There's so many different approaches. Uh, there, there really are for the fleas. Um, why is my 18 year old kitty? I'm going to be a little random here. Sorry. It's easier. Why is my 18 year old kitty, Teresa asks, shaking her head all the time? 
She had an infection near her ear that took a year to heal two years ago. Um, has So I'm assuming, Teresa, if you want to come on live, you can do that. Unmute yourself. I assume she's been shaking her head for two years. Um, you know, I, I can't remember when it started. You know, at first I just noticed, you know, she'd eat and go. And then, you know, I just noticed she'll, she'll do that. Um, you know, she'll be sitting somewhere and just shake her head. So this is why holistic approaches are so wonderful. If you were working with a Chinese medicine veterinarian, they could take the tongue and pulses and do palpation to see which meridians were out of balance and get those back in balance. And that may resolve it. If it's a homeopathic veterinarian, they can listen to all of the symptoms and prescribe a homeopathic medicine that may resolve it or it may need the second or third prescription. So sometimes we have to look at it from different perspectives. And the other that I've seen help with shake, with head shaking, regardless of the cause, and it's not as key to know the cause as it is to resolve it, is chiropractic or osteopathic. So I've definitely seen that. It's like, think about it. If your neck is sort of stiff, you might have an itchy ear at the same time. So, or I, I want to say something. Um, mm -hmm. She, I, I took her in the two years ago. She hadn't been to a vet for a long time. I've been following Beam and all of what you say, but I was really, you know, freaked out because it was near her, you know, it was on her face. And um, they did a surgery, and they put her out, and they, they actually gave her a rabies shot. I mean, I talked to Anitra Fraser after, and she said they should be liable for what they did because then they sent her home and she wasn't, and she was real woozy. She jumped up on a counter probably because she couldn't see. She never does that. And she fell, she did fall. She fell on, you know. So all of those, all of those could have contributed to this, but everything I just said can resolve it regardless of the cause. That's the key. So at this point, I would, and any 18-year-old kitty, I would strongly be sure you're working with a, a really good holistic veterinarian. So go to holisticactions.com slash select and get yourself connected up and or join us at, um, at Holistic Actions. And we will still recommend that you be working individually with a veterinarian who can help you. What was the name of that site again for the holistic? Go ahead. It, it's in the chat. The oh, okay. link is right in the chat. Okay. And all of these, all you have to remember is holisticactions.com. And then you can find all sorts of things there. Um, yes, some animals get very ill after a rabies shot. However, we recommend staying legal with the rabies um, unless they're ill at the time it's given, which shouldn't ever happen because the package insert says for use in healthy animals only. Now that of course is a judgment call, but um, it's easier. Unfortunately, DW, um, nozodes are not acceptable in lieu of a rabies vaccine for legal. Now, the good news is that the AVMA, the Conventional Veterinary Organization, has recommended, now every township can be different, but uh, they've recommended that if there ever was a rabies vaccine given, then you don't need to do a huge long quarantine if there's been possible exposure. Uh, there's still the 10 day um, if they bite somebody. Um, and um, so, uh, and I, nozodes do not create antibodies. So there's an entire discussion about nozodes, which are homeopathic preparations made from the body substances of animals who have each of the different diseases. But again, it does not, it's not, I don't recommend using them on a regular basis, more after there's been exposure. Um, so, um, Putting lead in tincture, I would not, homeopathic medicines can trigger the vital force to deeply heal. And sometimes this can cause some aggravations. Um, and, 
So I tend to stay away from homeopathic preparations used for everything. Like every time you see a flea, use Lidum. Every time there's a, um, sometimes it works. If there's trauma, Arnica often will work. If there's a bee sting, Apis will often work. If there's a, a bee sting, Lidum might work or other insect bites. But um, I would not, I, I would work at building health so your cats and dogs naturally do not attract fleas and work with the environment rather than doing any homeopathic medicine on a regular basis. But again, not everybody has the same opinion. Leadum does not, homeopathic medicines do not have any odor at all. Um, and let's see, read one out, Dr. Jeff, if you see one we haven't done. Sure, Doris in Ocean Pines has to pet her baby Ripley who had, was exposed to Giardia in foster care and she already did five days of manicure of Pinmenzel. No symptoms, but when she brought a stool sample to the vet, it was so positive. We're actually lingering in his gut. So I guess my question would be, and she asked, should I be concerned about this? And the answer is no. But it would be good to know, was it really the vet saw Giardia cyst or the positive test? You know, the antibody test is often positive, even though they really don't have active Giardia. And the reason I ask is because if the vet saw the actual Giardia cysts in the stool, that's a public health thing. So people right. and other animals get the get Giardia. Doris, do you want to? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I've had cats for many years, um, all of my adult life, I guess. And I never, I understand this is a parasite, a one cell parasite, but I never heard of this. But what my concern is, I understand that this is transmissible to humans. And um, so anyway, he's not having any symptoms. But that is my concern. And my question is, and I assume that Giardia is measured on some kind of a numerical scale because the vet said that he his numbers were real low, that it was there, like there was a little a little bit of it left. Should, you know, <laughs> Yeah, like a, and, should and I that, be worried, or is there a homeopathic remedy I can give him to make sure it clears out of his gut? Okay, you may, you may want to be doing a good probiotic. Make oh, okay. Sure he's on a um, a, you know, a good good fresh food diet, and then retest him in a couple of months, and that's okay. It. Okay. And I'm not, I wouldn't even worry about necessarily retesting him unless you, that would make you feel more comfortable. No, um, I'm not concerned. As long as he yeah. doesn't have any symptoms, I'm not, I don't think he needs to be retested. I'm listening to something. But what I would do is, um, Catherine, mute yourself, please. Thank yeah, you. I... Um, and um, what I would do, Doris, is, as Dr. Jeff said, really work at building up gut health. So for everybody, and someone else had asked this as well, um, the way to have a healthy gut is to feed a fresh food diet with a lot of variety and to help the planet, it's to buy your ingredients yourself locally. And we talk a lot about this in the free 101 course and in the forum for members. And um, the second is temporarily to use probiotics um, and even if there's poor gut health, you can have the stool tested. Um, and of course, the gut is responsible for any immune problems. So if you're dealing with immune problems at all, then you want to be thinking about working more with the gut. You can have the stool tested by animalbiome.com to see how are there good or bad organisms. I'm not sure that it's it's not a magic pill to do that test, you know, because okay. the, the microbiome changes all the time. But doing fecal transplants can sometimes improve health. It's one thing to try. 
-hmm. So for everybody who had that concern about um, gut health, and then I would definitely make sure you have a homeopathic or holistic veterinarian on your, on your team so mm -hmm. that you have somebody you can go to right away. <laughs> okay. Um, Kathy, one of the things to help prevent needing dentistry, although sometimes chihuahuas definitely need a little bit, is to be feeding big hunks of food. And this was another question that I sort of answered as well. But um, the it, it, we tend to feed, you know, dry food, canned food, processed food doesn't support dental health at all. In the wild, they are using their ripping and tearing teeth, and then they're using their bone crunching teeth, and they're shaking their head and getting a chiropractic adjustment. So even if you're feeding a ground food several, most of the time, several times a week, be sure you're feeding chicken necks, chicken backs, a big hunk of meat, a big hunk of heart meat, something they can sink their teeth into. And sometimes that can really clean up the teeth. I had one client who had five big dogs and one of them only, they're all on the same diet. One of them only would start developing some tartar and she would start feeding turkey necks. And in four days, the tartar would be gone. The other dogs were fine just on the regular diet. So every, every animal is different. So maybe you can avoid the dental, number one. Number two, what you can do in terms of decreased stress. So if the teeth are not really bad, but you feel they should be done, you can see if one of the mobile anesthesia-free dental services is available in your area, or if there's a mobile vet who's available in your area who does dentistry. And if not, then you need to start working now to totally alleviate the fear of the chihuahua going to the vet. And that's just very slow. So, um, Kathy, can you come on board? Can you say hello? Hi. Okay. Is your uh, does your Chihuahua like to ride in the car? Yeah, you know she's finally get, liking it. It took her a while um, to actually enjoy the car and relax. Right. So she so does now. now. Yeah. That's perfect. That's step one. So now that she likes to go for rides in the car, you take her out frequently and erratically for short car rides. And then you take her for a car ride all the way to the vet clinic and see what happens. If she starts getting nervous at any point going towards the vet clinic, you turn around and do a side road until she's happy again, and then you go home. And then you start getting closer and closer to the vet clinic. Um, once you're at the vet clinic, you open the door, you walk to the door. If she's still fine, you open the door. If she's still fine, you walk into the waiting room. Got the idea? Yeah. yeah okay. Just total patience and fl play around with flower essences. They're totally safe. Um, there's multiple companies, Jackson Galaxy Solutions, Green Hope Essences, Bach Flower. Play around with those. Those can really help as well. And um um, yeah, so that's a good essential oils. There's so many other things you can try as well. Uh, music. If you become a Holistic Actions member, we have got, oh, we've probably talked about this fear issue and anxiety issue in at least 20 to 40 different lectures. Okay. Yeah. She's very fearful. And that's, of, of that's, in, so yeah. that's really important to be working on that. And we talk about that a lot. Uh, and we have a lot of people who do behavior work as well, who can give you better answers. Now, she's very aggressive with her chewing. Uh -huh. like, like I've, that's why I've used, I know they're not really recommended, but you know, like the little bully sticks, because I do want her to use her, do her, because she eats fresh food, but so it's not chunky enough. So, okay. but so she's so Peter. aggressive with with her chewing like she I have to watch her with so many things because she'll just swallow it down um so you so, need it bigger just you need bigger pieces and okay. you may have to some people have to hold on like they take a chicken back or chicken neck and they have to hold on yeah. to one end of it okay while they're chewing on it okay okay so that's the better thing okay instead of something small where she'll just like a, I'm not sure if a 
like well, a chicken it's, neck it's, is... okay, it's okay if she swallows a piece of small chicken neck. However, it's not going to help her teeth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she wants, that's, it won't because she'll just be really, a, she just, she'll just loves food. So she has a, right. Uh, yeah, she'll just swallow it right down. I got it. Okay. All right. Thank Wonderful. You. Thank you. Lindy, go to holisticactions.com slash select. There are some Eastern South Carolina veterinarians who are holistic. Can't, don't know of any off the top of my head. And tracheal collapse usually, um, and phone consults can be done by any homeopathic veterinarian. So that's also listed in the article holisticactions.com slash select. So definitely go to that. Um, and usually there's not, it's not really tracheal collapse. That's pretty rare. Uh, so it responds quite well, usually to holistic treatment. Um, Lisa, seven cats and dogs, uh, generally get along, recently developed a UTI. So Using ferrum foss and Cali sulf, if they've helped but not fully resolved the issue, then you're right. Number one, you need to support her immune system, and you do that by feeding the best diet and you and uh, using energy methods like Reiki, Webb, Bingston, Theta Healing, Scalar Healing. You know the many different type of cats are so sensitive to um, energy healing; they usually respond really, really well. And you may need better, more accurate homeopathic prescribing. That would take us too long to tell if ferrum foss or Cali sulf were the similimum or the correct match. They weren't the correct match if it hasn't fully resolved the issue, or they are the correct match, but they need a higher potency or they need a different potency done in a increasing uh, shaking the, the bottle. Uh, so that's, uh, and also there's a wonderful herbal com combination. This is a temporary help, but for any UTI, somebody else mentioned it, Teresa mentioned it, Tinkle Tonic. Tinkle tonic is wonderful as a temporary help for um, urinary tract infections. But the very best, since you already are indicating homeopathy, is to learn more about it yourself and or to work with a homeopathic veterinarian. Does that answer it, Lisa? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. And one of the member benefits um, in Holistic Actions is I taught an in-person course for two summers in a row that was introduction to homeopathy for animals and then an intermediate course. And those are all available for members. So you get a four day, a three, two and a half day course or two day course as part of your membership. You get three two day courses as part of your membership to learn even more about homeopathy. Um, and see, this is perfect, Teresa. I love what you're sharing with everybody. She used Tinkle Tonic, used Safe Space, and had a Reiki session for her 18-year-old kitty, and her peeing out of the box decreased by 95%. And as she, as you continue, Teresa, trying different things, it may go down 100%. So, um, But the key thing I want to point here is she used an herbal combination, she used a flower essence, and she used an energetic healing. And that's what it may take. Sometimes one homeopathic vet, one homeopathic treatment, other times it takes all of this, that work. So good work, Teresa. And that's what we expect to see. It's not surprising. Um, so Melissa, um, you, it might be good for you to learn how to do the acupressure massage. Um, and no, there is not a point where you should stop trying to make him better and just accept. Absolutely not. Um, so it's a matter of just continuing. Like you heard me share maybe at the beginning, I'm 73 and three years ago, finally discovered what's getting me working better after trying 35 different things. So you never know. Keep working on it. And seriously, I would um, I would try several things. One is 
one of our speakers, sophisticated dog.com. One of our oh, see when I post, I lose where I am. Um, so uh, one of our speakers was um, Irene Bloom, and she has the sophisticated dog.com and does remote uh, or yeah, virtual behavior training. So that would be one possibility. Another is homeopathy. Another is web, and Jeff can type this in, whole energy body balance. That's another thing to try. Um, calming music. There's so many different approaches. Please don't give up. It's, it's, it, and it's interesting. The other piece is don't keep fighting it either. Accept where we are, how we are is perfect right now. And what are we going to try next? It, it's that kind of... Of, of attitude. We talked about shaking head, advantage, nope, no advantage, um, holistic treatment for ear infections. If there's repeated ear infections, we talked about that, chiropractic homeopathy, etc. Whoever is speaking needs to mute themselves. Um, Penelope lost her voice. She's 17 years old. Um, so right now she's not getting any specific, she's getting some, um, more supplemental, um, holistic treatments, but not, um, in-depth, um, energy. So I would, my best suggestion at this point, Barbara, is to begin working with a homeopathic veterinarian or a really good um, Chinese medicine veterinarian. Um, you've done enough diagnosis for starters, but it's really important, I think, for you to begin doing that. Does that make sense, Barbara, from what we've talked about? You want to unmute yourself, Barbara? Yeah, I'm, I wasn't sure whether you were speaking to my <laughs> um, article or not, so I'm sorry. Um, yeah. uh, I, I, I am going to a homeopathic vet, but it's, it's taking a while to get an appointment. Who are you, who are you going to be going to? Um, it's, uh, well, it was a local one. Um, what's his name? Uh, in Berkeley. Um, Crumbly, but he's not taking um, he's not taking uh, phone calls anymore. So it's okay. only now. So you may you may want to go to holisticactions.com slash select. Oh. Look for who else is in that area. Number one and number two uh, for homeopathy, you can definitely work by phone. Barbara Fischelson is in that area and she's doing telephone consulting oh, for good. sure and. If you call different ones, you may come up with somebody who can help you sooner. And check out Cheryl Schwartz. She may be close to you. She's a real leader with um, uh, Chinese medicine. And I recommend her book for everybody. In, it's called Four Paws, F-O-U-R, Four Paws, Five Directions. So that's the basic healthcare book. For Chinese medicine, Don Hamilton, homeopathic care of cats and dogs for homeopathy, and Anitra Frazier, the natural cat for all things cat. Um, I have all those books. <laughs> excellent. Well, check and see. Cheryl might be in your neck of the woods, and I'm so glad that somebody is going to Sue Swanson um, because she's just, she's a wonderful, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't move up to see what your name was. Um, and uh, she does Chinese herbs, which cats hate to take, and she's able to make them into a um, solution using a rife machine so that they can be just given to the skin <laughs> or just put on the skin instead of having to give orally. It's just amazing. Yeah, I've used Cheryl for my dog years ago, so I, I mm -hmm. forgot. Wonderful. Well, she's still around. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, in terms of controlling what a cat eats outside, it's not a, that's not a big deal. 
Um, but pay attention. If you have a cat that's really eating a lot of wildlife, you might want to work at keeping them inside more. And controlling health, eating stuff outside is usually a good thing unless they get into poison. Um, and the best you can do is to keep them as healthy as possible. That's the key. And Valerie, thanks so much for starting with your 14 month old pup. And so I would, but I would definitely begin um, getting a holistic veterinarian to be working with right now. Um, and it does, Ellen, we talked, well, wait a minute, let me finish up with that one. Oh, where really have trouble navigating this. Um, supplements. Um, as long as she's healthy and happy now, you're doing great. I'd say join Holistic Actions, at least do the free course. Um, Ellen, um, go to the article on select. Okay. That'll, that's critical, Ellen. And if not, email me at healthyanimals at AOL.com. And maybe I can point you in the right direction. Thank you. Um, raw diet, 7.4 castrated dog who's incontinent. So again, it would take us a lot more to go into details. Jeff gave you the suggestion of the wolf probiotic. Definitely consider working with a holistic veterinarian. Um, the, the key thing, Peter, is that you're treating you you aren't treating the underlying energy field imbalance that's the key um heart meat it doesn't matter what species it is the heart in every meat is excellent is really good um and calm a mile is good <laughs> isn't that cute that's like chamomile c-a-l-m-a-m-i-l-e whitney suggests for anxiety i love that um, what kind of chunks of meat or bones? Raw. Yeah, raw is better, but a huge cooked steak could be okay too. Um, and you need to definitely look for, I we sort of talked about that. Um, there are there are a number of good online meat companies. Um the, these Q and A's are not available as a replay, are they, Doctor Jeff? Well, we are recording this one on because Runa asked me to. I'm not sure what oh. she's doing with it, though. So that probably is for holistic <clears throat> action members. It might be. Um, so I would, um, yeah, definitely. You know, when cats go outdoors, or dogs run loose, things can happen. Um, I lost my cat that way. Uh, and my address is easy. It's healthyanimals at AOL.com or heal thy animals at AOL.com. Uh, somebody, one of my students recognized that. I didn't. And I think we actually at least briefly answered every question and our hour is up. How about that? All right. Yeah, you got them all. So thank you all for coming. We'll see you at the end of next month. Thanks, Monique. And if you and want to join us in HA on Monday, it's Labor Day. It's also vomiting month. Anyone that's got uh, vomiting issues, their dogs, cats, or other species, um, a, bunch, a bunch of webinars about that. All right. Now, of course, an early warning sign is cats who do vomiting and hairball gagging. <laughs> That's not an illness. That's a clue. The energy field's off balance. It's not something to palliate, to temporarily take care of with Buddha mix or hairball laxatone or anything like that. It's just a clue. Just another clue. Okay, I had to, had to put that in. All right. All right. Take care. Thank you. All. <laughs> Thank you. All. Bye -bye. Thank you.